And, uh, we both came to the conclusion that he's more than capable of doing that. Won. I think he might have preferred a, an easier assignment in his second round match here. But that said... Daryl Gurney could do with sharpening things up on his finishing because just watching him in the 100. Premier League the other night against Sulevich, there was uh, certainly room for improvements. He won't mind me saying that as well. He was punished by Sulevich for a string of missed doubles in that 8-5 defeat in Cardiff. Oh, he definitely um, won't mind to say in that, Rob, because you're absolutely 55. right. He has had problems with doubles in the past, but it was emphasised on Thursday in what was a very important game. Yeah, I mean, it was 19 out of 24 that he squandered. I mean, Sulevich himself didn't cover himself in glory with his finishing either, but there's something about Cardiff and Sulevich. I think he loves playing there. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. But, um, you know, as it is, he's still in contention to make the finals night at the O2 Arena. It's a very congested table in that segment of the draw. So, anyway, Gurney will put all that to one side for the time being because he can't do anything about the Premier League until he goes to Birmingham 95. next week uh, it's all about Munich here and now okay. terrific atmosphere I've got to say this Easter Sunday here at the Zenith if you're a Premier League player like Gurney is right now 100 you better make best friends with your suitcase <laughs> because we've come straight here from Cardiff I can't really see the pointing going on unless you're in the Premier League because back in Zarbrücken for Friday but he's got to go to Birmingham he'll come straight back to Zarbrücken and then from there you've got two more Euro tours after that One with Premier Leagues in the middle and he's, he's done that again Kyle he did that yesterday yep, what do you think leave double two to leave the double two wouldn't advise that normally but he's uh, clearly got the confidence to take it on but he, he might not get the chance the anyway because Gurney Kyle takes Gurney. the opener Second leg Kyle to with that journey down Route 66 it was a little sort of air in that face of Gurney saying that's more like it that's a bit sharper on the doubles because that double 12 didn't miss by much that double 6 was very good yeah, prior to that loss to Sulevich in the Premier League he was very very good indeed he was on a great streak which included that win in Hildesheim and now we'll earmark to get more titles on top of 84. the one pro to a title he's got on the floor the one prototype he's got on the European tour and then the two majors. So he's evening the scale a little bit. We, we used to tease Darrell oh, about yes. how he only had one floor tight and two majors. Yeah. It was a bit lopsided, but he used to smile at that. And everybody wants to get one of everything, don't they? They want to get majors, they want to get one on the floor, they want to get European tours, they what? want to get World Series I'm events like what Kyle's got. He got his in New Zealand. Great answer from the original in this leg. To potentially equalise. 140. Kylie required 97. Shuttle 19 leaves tops. And that leaves double 10. But Gurney's on 255 anyway. Gurney's but uh, Anderson does Anderson. find double 10. Gurney Diogo Portella still game. hanging around this weekend, taking in the second day action. Losing in his opening match to uh, Rastovitz yesterday. 60. And it's Rastovitz who potentially lies in wait for the winner of this one, but he has the small matter of seeing off Rob Cross, first of all. Is that all? Something that Daryl Gurney did on his way to that title in Hildesheim. He beat Rob Cross in the third round 6-2 as well. I think, I think the toughest match for Gurney in Hildesheim was against Stephen Bunting. Well, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it was because he missed darts at a double. Uh, to wrap it up Bunting was then allowed back in but Bunting was looking at 106 and didn't even get down to a have a crack at a dart for the match 40. and uh, in the end he won it with his fourth match dart so I think that was a tough assignment and then it was uh, Adrian Lewis who he overcame in the semi-finals before beating Ricky Evans in the final itself Daryl played well in that game against Adrian 95. I think Adrian hit the wall a little bit but Daryl handled the situation brilliantly and he Changes colour of his shirts most days to start. He's got a white one, he's got a pink one. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a very fetching blue today. He's got the away kit, and the third kit, and the European kit. I'm a fan of the, the same design shirt but in different colours. It's nice to have a bit of variety. And that's what you get with Kyle's shirt. Lots of different colours. That's definitely... That said, though, Paul, if you if you took Michael Van Gogh out of that green shirt, he would look like a different man. 
Oh, I remember him wearing pink. I remember him wearing black. <laughs> but now he's just become synonymous with it. Absolutely right. Another one of those for Gurney. Ooh, he snuck that in. Double 16. 114. Yeah, I remember when Michael Van Gerwen wore a black shirt with green writing. I think it was in a World Youth Final. And he got beat. I think 20. he swore that he would never wear that colour again. Yeah, the big 3 0 for Michael Van Gerwen. Next week. So he may well begin a uh, week of celebration with a title here and it would be his 30th European Tour title as well maybe it's just written in the stars this weekend Paul well 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 isn't that something maybe he's just timed it like that he does think like that doesn't he <laughs> I don't think he'll wait till his 31st birthday for his 31st European Tour title though. for some reason my head is clanging at the moment with something 26. that happened on Davil Gurney's 32nd birthday I'm sure he he did something on his 32nd birthday with a double 16 but these things don't just happen. They just have the stars aligned. Well, he was that, his 32nd birthday was last year, March of last year. 100. Because he was 33 last month. So it would have been maybe the start of the Euro Tour in Leverkusen. Yeah. That sounds familiar. 60. Well, it was that weekend. Anyway, we digress. I noticed someone as well on the walk-on with Kyle, and I have to express my opinion here. I actually really love his walk on because that song is so befitting Kyle and it's a great booming track as well but I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that every time he walks up the steps towards the stage he wipes his feet on the last step before he goes onto the stage and I don't know whether that's a thing where he's just you know wiping his feet before he goes onto hollowed ground he's, he's standing on sacred ground as the lyrics go in the, in the song yeah and that's how he that's how he sees the stage as his his altar, his temple. Well, that's it. I'm going to have a word with Makuru Suzuki. The next time I see her play, she's going to have to play with no shoes on. <laughs> 180. Met with 180. And Anderson looking at 96 now. Single 20 car. 65. Well, that 180 has got Gurney down to 177. It's still a big ask this for him, but maybe can just try and get himself into a position to challenge. 57. Well, he's down to Shanghai, just in case. You would think that Daryl's not going to get a shot. Little reset. Double 10 again. Inside, so Daryl does get a shot. And if he's going to miss this 60, he'd much rather miss it high. Or he could just hit the 60 with the first dart. Big 20, he's going left side. Great guide, that second dart really used that well. Excellent build up that from Daryl Gurney. And Gurney breaks for a 3 1 lead. I would love to know what Daryl Gurney's thinking right now because his expression was very un Daryl Gurney-like when he checked that Shanghai 20. He looked 16. almost like he was laughing. Nothing to laugh about. 3-1 lead. And that 12 next to his name is going to change. 100. The seedings are based on about a month ago where they stood because they have to be seeded before the qualifiers start. And by virtue of that win 95. a couple of weeks ago, that seeding is going to shrink that number ever so slightly. So he'll be secure yeah. as a seed for a lot Well, for some time to come, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's up to number five on the current Pro Tour order of merit. He's number five on the overall order of merit. He did go briefly up to number three after that uh, triumph in Hildesheim. But uh, he's back down to number five. Yeah, it was really weird because when he won that title, he went to three. And then within a week, he went back to five. Just the complexity of the rankings. With the money coming off from two years ago. Yeah. And Gary didn't throw one dart. He stayed at number four all the way through that. And Peter Wright and Davil Gurney flip-flopped twice. Such are the intricacies of the two-year order of merit as opposed to the one-year Pro Tour order of merit. Got to move. Precarious. 127. Davil requires 68. Beautiful setup. Oh, 
Tops again. Ooh, he's got next door. Kyle, you require 32. Is that the moment that gives Kyle just a little bit of a chance in this match? Because it could have been 4 1 to Gurney, but Kyle has held on. Game on. This starts at tops for a 4 1 lead, and as it is. Just to clarify what I said before about moving, yes, I know he had to move because he had 39 left. What I meant was he had to move literally because it was just about to fall out and we said on a few occasions and it's very true for both of these players if you look at the end of the points of Daryl Gurney you can see they've been roughed up majorly with Kyle's darts he's got grooves at the end they, they throw very very long points so sometimes their darts wiggle in the board so they need that extra oh. little bit of grip and there's a perfect example of a little bit of misfortune that you can get with the big points well, I think we'll discuss uh, the wobble factor when we watch Peter Wright later, uh, given what happened against James Wade in Cardiff on Thursday night. Wade had plenty to say about that as well in the aftermath of that. Yeah, he said when he realised what he was using, he had him. 100%. That was the very word he used. He said felt it was just there for the taking. I have to agree with James. I, I'm, I'm one of Peter's 57. biggest fans and he's a friend of mine, but as soon as I saw what he was using, I thought, Wade, he's winning this match. Yeah, well, given he was what, 15 matches unbeaten as well going into it. That also helps it's as well. very, very much so. He's on a terrific run. Back-to-back -back titles on the Pro Tour. Either side of uh, two unbeaten performances in the Premier League as well. Or in between those, uh, or sandwiched in between all of that. He's had uh, a couple of matches in the Premier League too. You said downstairs by Kyle to get to a ton. Downstairs it is for Gurney now. Leaving the middle of the board. Just shook it. Pierce slips from Daryl Gurney. Missed darts at double 20 for a 4 1 lead. He's missed a bullseye there for a 4 2 lead. And he did go that route, tops, tops, but not to be. That wasn't far away. 41. Daryl required 25. No great shakes for missing that big number because he may not be back to the board. Gurney loves double eight. Just kiss that one. Ooh. <laughs> Look of Kylie requires 59. Confusion. Um, you look baffled there, Daryl Gurney. It's only going to be two darts at double for Kyle. Game only needs the one. That's a picture Kyle perfect tops. You can Kyle see from his gesticulation there. He's just saying get up. That says to me that when he's going for tops, he just needs to lift that dart a little bit. The fine margins 100. that the top dart players live by. He missed the two double top shot by maybe three millimetres. And that is just not good enough for these guys. 93. Well, these two have met only twice before, which uh, comes as something of a surprise. Uh, both of them in 2016. 140. And both of them on the Pro Tour in the Players' Championship. In fact, they were back-to-back -back tournaments. One win apiece, both by six less to three. And it could well be that this one is 6-3 as well. But which way will it turn? I know where my money is. In my pocket. <laughs> this could have a few 82. more twists and turns before the end of it. Could well go all the way. The winner of this one will play Rastovitz or Cross. And Cross is looking for a rebound <coughs> after losing eight straight legs to Van Gerwen on Thursday. That will have stung. Yeah, needs a response this uh, weekend as uh, Rob Cross just to try and move on from that. Talking of money in the pocket, though, uh, Daryl Gurney 83. has earned almost £250,000 since the start of last September. That's astonishing. I'll keep your bank manager happy. Of course, he uh, claimed his first TV title at the World Grand Prix in 2017, but lately he's been doing the business once again. The double-double shot here is not prudent, but that is a wonderful dart from Daryl. Double eight. Good. Magnificent stuff. A little shake of the head there from Gurney because he's, OK, he's pulled that one out of the bag, but there have been missed opportunities before. And that's why he was just looking a little bit rueful there. 
140. Oh, Darrell, I'd forget about what's gone on before and just revel in that shot. That shot at the 60 was marvellous. I had a nice chat with Darrell Gurney, actually, about six weeks ago. We were coming back from an exhibition together, going to the airport. Spoke to him for about an hour. It was really nice. He was talking to me about his car collection and One what he likes to do in his spare time, the very little bit of it he gets. Likes to spend time with his little family. And 100. when he does get a bit of a spare moment, he does like to tinker with a car or two and wheel and deal. Doesn't matter what you love in life, you have to have a break from it at some point. Is this some sort of Ulster version of Pimp My Ride that Donald Gurney <laughs> is involved with? Oh, I'd pay to watch that. That'd be class. That's class as well. And it gets him down to 1 2 1. With Anderson needing this 47 and now needing tops. Anxious times potentially for Kyle Anderson, but he does level things up at four apiece. So bang goes the 6 3 that I was suggesting might come off again. Absolutely. You've got me thinking now. I'm always one for seeing what dark players could do with their celebrity. So we'd have a little bit of Pimp My Ride with Daryl Gurney. We've had some Bavarian fashion show action with Rob Cross this week. Yeah, he was kitted out by the, uh, the local Lederhosen specialist. 60. I'm not sure how happy he was about it. He didn't look totally comfortable, I have to say. It might just have been, a, you know, the nature of the photograph, but... I mean, when Russ Bray got kitted out the other year, he, he was happy as Larry. He couldn't get him out of the shop. He, he doesn't mind a bit of local regalia, does Russ. And Van Gerwen also got kitted out as well uh, that time. That treble 20 has been butchered by Gurney this match. And he's holding on to that throw very well. Kyle from 3 four, 7 get to a finish he would need a max only gets 100. one treble albeit a very good one at the end One hundred. he had 66 earlier in the match he went for treble 14 got that missed the double 12 and hit the double 6 you get the feeling now that Kyle is going to leave himself a finish He's going to do exactly the same. Very popular way of going for it these days. Because it's straight down the same line. Now he's got choices. Single 20. Leaves double 16, so an adjustment needed. 34. Mm. Outside chance for Kyle to nick this break of throw. And in World Championship snooker starting weekend, he needs a 147. <laughs> but that coincidence won't happen either. 76 remain. 91. And he needs misses from Gurney, which I don't see coming. 5 4. On we go. Gurney, one away. Now, just before we get too involved in this, we talked about the quirks of the order of merit and the ranking system on the two year order of merit in particular. Uh, but here's another one for you, Paul. Steve Lennon will break into the top 32 today for one day and one day only for what reason not involved here this weekend 180 for Gurney as Paul ponders that one I'm sure I got a, a message from somebody about this I've, I've totally forgotten about it is it because somebody's defending a lot of money from 12 months ago nope it's because Easter is one week later this year than it was two years ago it's a moving festival day. That is brilliant knowledge from uh, our man Burton DeWitt at BSD987 if you want to give him a follow on Twitter. All without throwing a dart. Resident brilliant. darting super nerd that Burton is. Brilliant knowledge. He is reveling in the fact that St Kilda are top of the ladder <laughs> in the AFL and surely to the chagrin of Kyle Anderson who is a massive Fremantle Dockers fan. Gurney might be top of the ladder here. 
180 gets him down to 41. It's a potential 11 darter for Daryl Gurney to break the Anderson throw and to win the match 6-4. Anderson needs to respond here. It's been a good performance from Daryl. It's been assured. I get the feeling he's put in some good hours on the board in the last couple of days. So double 16. Only needs the one dart and Daryl Gurney. Well, I'm not quite sure what he'll take from that. Normally he's very dismissive of his open.